<laughs> Get the party started before the kids come home. Okay, now we're sharing, so we're good. We're ready to go. All right, so the basis of the screen print or the problem that most people don't do screen prints is because you have to burn the image or you have to get the image burned into your, uh, into the screen itself. But in this case, we're gonna be using the Cricut. Uh, we're gonna cut this image out from the Cricut um, and use it to put inside of the screen so we can do multiple shirts um, without having to use the vinyl. Um, so typically when you see a screen print or when you see a screen or if you're screen printing this image right here, if this is the image that we want to be screen print, typically what we would do is we would take this image and we would burn it into the screen. And once you burn it into the screen, then you'll be able to rub your paint up and down and you'll only be able to get what you see here. Now, what I use is I use HTV. I tried the... Um, the 631, which is the removable vinyl to see if it was gonna work for me, but the removable vinyl did not work. So what we're gonna be working with today is gonna be HTV. So I've already created the image that I'm gonna be doing, which is, of course, my battery's low. Let me get my charger. Let me plug up real quick. All right, now we're back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be taking this specific image. I've already created the image. It's for a local restaurant here in town. Um, I do a lot of a good bit of his his promotional work so you're gonna cut this image out regularly just like you would cut it out if you're gonna be putting on a shirt but in a case like this since we're gonna be using it to screen print we're gonna have to slice this image into the box because you're gonna be reverse weaving which means you're gonna be weaving out the name and the image all the black that you see so it's gonna be cut on a revert or you're gonna be reverse weaving it so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the image and put the image right over the box. We'll bring that image back to the front so it's on top of it so you can actually see what you're doing. And it looks like the box is just gonna be just a little bit off because it's hanging off. So you wanna make sure you get the complete image inside of it. So we'll uh, blow up the box just a hair bit right here. And we will connect or we'll attach and we'll just slice it attach it and then once you slice it oh I'm sorry you can't slice it because it's multiple images so now that I've already got it made what I need to do actually now with this because if you look over here uh, it's not attached it's not welded it's attached so we're gonna have to weld it because we want it all to go on one image so we'll weld this All right, so now we got it welded. Now that it's welded, we're gonna take it and we're gonna put it back over the square again and we will slice it at that point. Make sure you try to get it centered um, or as centered as you can. So now that we've got it on there, we will attach to both of them and now we will slice it. I'm working on a Windows computer. I'm used to working on my Mac. So I'm trying to figure out how these quick keys on this computer work. So what we'll do is we'll just slice it out. Once you have it sliced out, uh, it's not a need to keep this, but I mean, just in case you wanted to, you know, whatever, do whatever it is you want to do to it. So I'm going to just hide that one. And what we just sliced out of it, I'm going to, I'm going to hide that one too. Typically I would delete it, but I'm just going to hide it for this sake. And this is what we're going to want. This is what you're going to want to print is this part right here. So basically what you see here, if you see the letters and stuff like that, the letters and stuff is what's actually with what you're gonna put the actual ink on. All the white part is where it's gonna cover, where the ink is gonna catch. So what we do, now that we have it like this, we're gonna go ahead and go through the print and cut. Um, you do have to flip it, just like you regularly flip it when you're doing shirts. I'm sorry, not that way.
So you are gonna have to flip it before you get ready to send it through in order for it to be cut. Uh, and I save some time. Uh, I've already printed it and I've already cut it and I weaved it in order to just to save a little bit of time because I didn't want y'all waiting on me. So now we're taking, we'll go ahead and move over to our next location here, my next little spot I got set up. And hopefully you can see, hopefully. It's backwards, so I can't see, so I had to turn it around. So give me a sec. Or I can't see the comments, rather. Okay, now we're good. Can you see? Yeah. So I've already weaved uh, what we're gonna be using. Um, which is the image that we're gonna need. I hope you can see this because I can't, there we go. Maybe that's a bit better. I've already pre-weaved the image and I've already got it already picked out. That way it's gonna save us just a hair bit of time. I won't be able to see the comments that you're gonna be making because I'm gonna just hop right into this head first. And unfortunately I can't see my camera uh, because of the way that I'm trying to set it up. So bear with me. I think that's good. So it's already been pre-weaved because it's pre-weaved pretty much. This is the image that we wanted. This is the image that we wanted to go for. Now that we have it, what we're gonna do is I have my screen. I bought this screen from a local place here in town. Uh, this screen was, I think like $23. It is a speedball frame. Uh, it comes with the frame. It comes with the mesh and it comes with the, uh, the rope that goes into it also. The ink that we're gonna be using today is gonna to be Speedball ink. Also, this is uh, opaque. No, I'm sorry, this is uh, white, I think. Look like it's uh, pretty good. But this is the uh, ink that we're gonna be using, which is a Speedball ink. I'm sorry, I'm holding it up too high, which is gonna be a Speedball ink and our screen that you can get these from Amazon. You can get the ink from Amazon. Uh, pretty much everything that I have here, you can get from Amazon. Of course, you're gonna need this, which is your ink scraper. You can get this from Amazon. Everything that I have here, pretty much you can get it from Amazon and you're gonna need some tape. I just used um, the printer, uh, the, the paint tape, it's cheap. So this is the option that I decided to go with. So what we're gonna do now is the screen is already put in these, but we need to get this screen off because what we're gonna be doing is we are going to press what we just made into the actual screen itself, which is gonna give us that quote unquote burn image that we're looking for. And I, the last time I did this, I was able to make about, um, about 50, 60, 60 some shirts out of an eight ounce bottle. I made about 60 and I actually had just a little bit of ink left. So a little bit of ink goes a long way as an FYI when it comes to this. And when I measure mine is I just use a spoon because I don't want too much on there. Uh, you don't want ink all over the place because especially you're gonna be working with shirts. Uh, you don't want this ink to get on your shirt. I mean, it wipes out really quick if you catch it quick, but if not and it stay on there, then that is gonna stay on there. It's just like when you press it and you've got that extra vinyl on there or you've got the extra um, extra vinyl on your uh, on your shirt and you press it and that vinyl stays there, this is the same way. It's gonna pretty much stay there and that's not what you want. So I have my press already heating up. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. And it's just pretty much just the screen. Oh, let me show you something real quick so you don't get that part messed up. So with the screen being like this, you've got two sides to the screen. You've got the label side is what I will call it. And then you have the back side. You want your image to go on the inside. Uh, let me put it back together and show you real quick. I guess I should have showed that from the beginning. So this is what your screen looks like. You want your image to go on the inside because you want the ink to be on the inside barriers up here. You don't want it on the back side. The image goes on the inside. So what we're gonna do, we'll just take it and 
find a comfortable spot for it to be. And I'm waiting on my press to heat up. And then once my press heat up, then I'll be able to go jump back into it for you. I should have already had it heat. I was ready. So I'm gonna just take this. I'm gonna take it over to my press really quick and I'm just gonna press it. Uh, it's just like regularly pressing the shirt. It's just pressing it. That's all that we're gonna be doing in order to get this image onto the screen itself. So give me just a second to get that done. I see some of the questions. I don't see all the questions, so please do forgive me if I don't answer anything. Um, I see that you said that you didn't take your screen apart. Uh, it's not a necessity that you have to take the screen apart, but because my screen isn't big enough, I don't have a really, really big screen, so because I don't have a really big screen, I had to take mine apart because I've got a really big heat press. There we go. All right, so now that we've got that, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull the transfer sheet off the top. If you use an iron or if you use something smaller, whatever the case it is, that is perfectly fine. Uh, but I just use my heat press. That way you don't have to pull your screen apart. But it just makes it a little bit easier for me to pull my screen apart. And when I look at the back of it, I always want to make sure that it's actually pressed in there and there's no air bubbles beneath it because if you do have air bubbles beneath it, uh, you're going to have a big problem. You, your ink is going to run through it. So make sure that you don't do that. The time and the temp that I use to press is uh, 300 at about 15 seconds. But my suggestion to you is to check it uh, because you don't want it to burn a hole through it because you can burn a hole through it. So now that we've got it in there, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna be putting it back inside of the uh, back inside of the screen. And getting it back inside of the screen, especially if you don't have the two that you need, is probably gonna be the hardest part ever. But we're gonna freehand this because I didn't get the, there's a roller piece that you can buy that will help this just slide back in almost seamlessly. So I'm just using the back of my uh, my weeding tool, the back of it, not the front of it, to poke a hole in it. I'm using the back of my weeding tool just to push it in, and it slides in pretty good. I didn't want to spend all that money on a project that I didn't even know if I was going to actually stick with it or not, uh, which is a lot of people problem when they want to try something new. They go spend a billion dollars on trying something new and it doesn't work for them, and then they found out that it was just a waste of money. So before you go jump and buy all the tools and stuff like that that you need for this project, uh, try to find something that you got around the house to see if it's gonna work for you. I am just pressing it back in all the way around. You wanna make sure that you keep it tight and it can be a hassle sometimes in order to press it back in, but if you get a screen or if you use your easy press or if you use an iron in order to iron the image on, you probably don't have to take it off. I am just putting it back in. Yes, you will be able to rewatch it. Can you reuse your screen? Um, I tried to reuse the screen by pulling it off, but it didn't work for me. Uh, there's a possibility that it may work, but you can buy extra screen from Amazon for like dirt cheap, uh, which is what I did. I can reuse my frame, but uh, just for more screens. But you wouldn't do this method if you're just doing one or two shirts. That just honestly wouldn't make sense because it would honestly be a waste of your time to do that. Uh, I only did this because I had multiple, like 50, 60 something shirts to do. But in, the reason why I cut this one is because the guy that I'm going to be making it from, um, he orders a lot of shirts, a lot, a lot of shirts. So it only makes sense 
in order for me to create this screen. That way, when he get ready to order, I've already got the screen ready. It's just sitting to the side. I just pull my screen out, put ink on, and make it happen. What can I do for you? When you order food for work, your reputation's on the line. So we have insanely helpful people on our line. Feed meetings easy with easycater.com. Make sure it's pulled tight. You finally made it happen. It hasn't been just you two in far too long. But tonight, it's right. Yeah. And it's pulled tight. It's in there. I hope you can see it um, where it's in there. And at this point, what you want to do is you want to take your painter's tape, the tape that you have, and anything that you see on the outside that's not your image, please make sure you put tape on it. If you don't put tape on it and you just go ahead and put your ink in it now, all this white that you see around the screen is gonna be on your shirt. The only part that you want showing on the inside of this is no more than just the image and the text alone. That's all you wanna see. Everything else, you need to cover it up. And if you don't cover it up, then you're gonna have a mess on your shirt. So always make sure that, uh, always make sure that you cover all the inside up. And what I do, especially on small parts like that, I will put just a piece on the back back here just to make sure because that's just me. So give me a few seconds. Let me go ahead and get me taped off real quick. And I guess on both sides, I, uh, I can answer some questions at this point, I guess. There we go. I got to turn the music off, so you got to bear with me. You can get the roller thing at Lowe's, Hobby Lobby. Yeah, you can get all that. I just didn't do it. Have you done with multiple colors? I have not done multiple colors yet. Uh, this is my very first go round um, on just the screens itself. I haven't done the multiple colors yet. Can you take the HVT off afterwards? Um, I tried it and it didn't work for me, but just because it didn't work for me don't mean that there's not another way that you can try it and to get it to work but it just didn't work for me. So I'm not saying that you can't and I'm not saying that you can't. I am using HTV, um, HTV. I tried the permanent removable or the 651 and the 631 and unfortunately neither one of those worked for me. Not saying that you can't do it, but this is just the way that I do it. So that's just an, an FYI. Do you think a press is better than something like a Cricut Easy Press? Personally, yeah. I love the Easy Press, but I, I have a love-hate relationship with the Easy Press. That's just that's just me. Uh, I know some people who have the Easy Press who's in love with the Easy Press, and you can't tell them anything wrong about the Easy Press. Which I mean, if it works for you, it works for you. But everything that works for me may not work for you, just like everything that worked for you may not work for me. So that's the reason why I always tell you, you know, to look at multiple options, try multiple things. If it works for you, then it works for you. And if it don't, then it won't. I use the 651 and it works great. I have done multiple colors by just cutting image twice. Yes, I am working on the multiple color, but on these, I don't have a need for multiple colors yet uh, because my hands are in so many different things. Uh, I don't see myself actually just sitting down, just going through screen print after screen print after screen print. Um, but I will look into it and I will bring you what I can find. Uh, do you remove the HTV from the screen after? Um, in a case like this, um, I'm not gonna remove this because this is gonna be a continuous order. This guy's always gonna be ordering for me. So because he's always gonna be ordering for me, then it makes sense to just already have his screen already ready. That way when he gets ready to order, I can just press on and have it ready for him the next day without going through the vinyl or without having to go back and redo this again. Like I said, this is only used for big orders. This isn't a use for just a few orders because it is it is time consuming to try to prepare the screen and get the screen set up. So if you're just working on one or two shirts, then I wouldn't suggest you do that. But hey, you know, to each his own. If that's what you want, then that's what you want. When you are pressing your screen, always make sure when you're pressing your screen uh, that you, you know, do it in increments to make sure that you're not, because not all, pr not all presses are the same. <laughs> and I learned that the hard way. I had an older press that I had for about, what, two, three years? And in that press, 
Um, it said that it was 400 degrees, but I swear to God, that press is like a billion degrees. They sell a heat thermometer, so if you just take a heat thermometer and put it to your press, whenever you set it to a certain temperature to make sure that it's the temperature for whatever it is that you set it at. Uh, so you can always test your printer or test your uh, press to make sure that it's right or your temperature is right. So I've got pretty much everything on the inside covered and because my lines are really small, they're really close on the outside, I'm just gonna put some on the back side right here. Um, I don't know if you're supposed to not do that or, or to do that, but I just, you don't want your ink, your ink bleeding through. That's what you don't want. If your ink end up bleeding through, um, then you're gonna have that ink on your shirts or just bleed spots on your shirt. So just whatever color ink that you're gonna be using is just gonna be all over your shirt. So always make sure that you, you get it in there really, really, really good. It's not a necessity that you have to do the back side just as long as you know you did the front side right. But me, I just, I'm just over cautious when it comes to stuff like that. I didn't use a heat press. You can use a heat press, but I ended up using, a, um, I use my regular press. I, I took the screen off. So, but if you have a heat press, contingent upon what size screen you have, you could probably, uh, you could probably just sit it inside of your press and just go with it. Or if you're using an iron, it's the same difference. You can use an iron and do it. You can turn on music on there if you want. Hmm? Working and listening to power, huh? All right, so. <laughs> what I do mm -hmm. So we got our image together. Uh, it is already in. It's set. So at this point, the only thing we need to do at this point is to just go ahead and go through with our ink. Let me press my shirt really quick in order to get the wrinkles out. We're only gonna be doing one shirt because I just wanted to show you. I know a lot of people at work and I'm not trying to pull you away from work to be watching me. This video is gonna be on here for later so you can always rewatch it. Let me press the wrinkles out of my shirt. So now that I've got my wrinkles out of my shirt, you just pretty much at this point, just line your shirt up or make sure your shirt is flat down. Make sure it's on a hard surface. If it's on like, um, uh, if it's on like a soft surface and you're trying to push your ink through it, you're gonna be pressing down and you're gonna be putting a whole lot of ink on the inside of it. So I always made sure mine was on a soft surface. Take the screen that we just did and line it up to where you want it or where you want your image. This was originally supposed to go in the back, but I wanna show him both options. I wanna show him what it looks like on the front and I wanna show him what it looks like on the back. So on this one, we're gonna be doing it on the front. Once you line up your image and make sure you have your image right, uh, this is the ink that we're gonna be using. It's gonna be the Speedball ink. It washes off your hands. Uh, pretty well, really quick rather, let me say that. But you just have to make sure you get it off pretty quick. If you get some on a shirt or if it gets on a shirt accidentally, then you can always just get a, a wet towel and just dab it off really quick. I always like to make sure that I have a rag nearby. I typically wear a, uh, a apron, but I took it off. So I use just a spoon. You don't have to use a spoon. You can use whatever it is that you want to use. But like I said, I'm just now getting started in this. So because I'm just now getting started in this, I am um, I'm going the cheap way. Doesn't take much. Take a spoonful, and I probably don't even need the full spoonful, and just go from one side to the other side, depending on which way you're making it.
Um, if you're gonna be making multiple shirts, you can put a good bit because of course you're gonna be making multiple shirts, but because I'm not gonna be making multiple shirts, I didn't wanna use that much. Let me see if I can get you down a little bit closer. There we go. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. Uh, do you put something in between or on the inside of the shirt? Because these are gilding shirts and they're the 100% the um, cotton. It doesn't really bleed through unless you like put a whole lot of pressure on it. We're not going to be putting that much pressure on it. So it's not, I mean, I, if, you, if you're confident and you, you want to put something in between, then yes. My suggestion is for you to go ahead and put something in between, but we're not going to be putting anything in between it. Um, and you just take your scraper and you make sure that this doesn't move. So you always want to make sure that you have this down. Typically it's supposed to be clamped down, but we're not going to be clamping it down. So we're just going to hold it down here and just straight up. And I always come back down with it to always make sure that I have it completely covered because if you don't have it covered, it's kind of hard to try to go back on it and redo it. Or it's just hard to try to re realign it rather, let me say that. All right, so I felt like I got good coverage in it. I'm confident with what I have. Um, of course, I got some on my hand here. Always make sure your hands are super clean. If your hands aren't super clean and you're ready to pull this off and you get this stuff on your shirt, then understand that it's going to be on the shirt. And we'll just pull it off here. And how I was telling you about that bleed on the bottom, I don't know if you can see it. I have a bit of bleed on the bottom of mine because I didn't take mine off right. I could take a towel and just wipe it off, but because this was the practice shirt, it really doesn't bother me that I have it because this is primarily just practice for me. But this is what happens when you don't, uh, when you don't tape off everything or if it's not taped off right and the ink ends up getting beneath it. I'm glad this actually happened. The ink ends up getting beneath it and when the ink is beneath it, it just starts dropping off like that. But this is pretty much what the image looked like once it's screen printing. Now, what you could do at this point if um, I didn't do it, but what you can do at this point is you could take, uh, I have a heat gun, hair dryer, whatever the case it is, and just hit it a little bit. Or you can just take it, sit it to the side, fold it, well, don't fold it up, but just take it, sit it to the side, and just let it sit there until it's dry. Typically, what I do is after it sits there for maybe like uh, maybe 20, 25 minutes, contingent upon how many I'm making, because I just be pouring through them at this point, just going through it, going through it, going through it at this point. Um, typically, what I would do is I just sit it to the side. Once I sit it to the side, just take some... Um, Parchment paper over it, put over the top of it. You could put it beneath your ink print, put it under your press at that point. Um, put it beneath your press at that point to just press it to make it quick dry. But I don't make them quick dry. I just typically leave mine to the side and just let them dry overnight or dry on their own. Uh, if you read the ink, the ink will tell you how long it takes in order for it to totally cure. But for me, I just don't like to touch them and I just leave them to the side. And I leave them to the side for quite some time, at least overnight. Um, before I get ready to hand them out. But I mean, to each his own when it comes to it. Uh, Speedball, if I'm not mistaken, it actually cur cures or it's supposed to dry pretty quick. Um, but if you have a dryer to put it in or the, the, the conveyor dryer in order to put it in, then it dries up super quick. But this, honestly, it, if you take a heat gun to it, uh, if you take a heat gun to it, the heat gun will actually bring it, um, it'll dry it really quick and take a piece of parchment paper, put it underneath your press and press it and then it's good to go at that point. But make sure that it's dry to the touch. Like this isn't dry to the touch, so you would take a heat gun to it, but if you don't want to take a heat gun to it, then just sit it to the side and just let it go on its own. But I mean, that's pretty much the basis of how it's done. I can go back and I can still use this same screen over and over again, but you don't want to let the ink dry on the inside of it. If you let the ink dry on the inside of it, then it's going to end up, the ink is going to stay in your actual print. So when you get ready to do it again, it's not going to cover, it's not going to give you the coverage because you've got ink spots in it. So you can just take this, take this screen 
and just take it outside and just run water over it. Once you run water over it, then it's gonna be still good to go. But just because you got that little bleed right there don't mean that it can't be fixed. That just means that I need to put more tape right here because that's where my bleed is. Um, it's probably always best, especially if you're just trying this, to try it on a practice shirt before you try it on a real shirt so you can make sure that you have everything properly covered. Um, I will probably just, there it is right there. You can see it here from the bleed part that came through it. Uh, right there on the bottom, you see where it bled through, but up top, it's good, which is what we want and where we're going with it, but on the bottom, it bled through. So uh, what you can do at this point is you can just take a rag and wipe, wipe, uh, oh. sorry, my phone is, what you can do at this point is you can take a rag and just wipe over it. And once you wipe over it, just put another piece of tape back over it and you'll be good to go. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I mean, you're more than welcome to hit me up um, on my inbox or you could uh, send a friend's request. If there's anything that I can help you with, I'll be more than elated to assist you with it. Oh, it turned sideways on me. I'll be more than elated to assist you with it. But until then, um, you'll have a good day.